The United States is not the only former English colony embroiled in a national fight over immigration and asylum. Over the past decade, Australia has been dealing with its own controversy about asylum seekers being held on island detention centers. In 2016, then-President Obama reached a deal with Australian Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull to swap refugees being held by Australia in exchange for asylum seekers headed to the U.S. from Central America. But after President Trump took office in 2017, a transcript of his contentious call with Australian Prime Minister Turnbull leaked. President Trump reportedly said he hates taking in these people. In response, Turnbull told the U.S. president, a deal is a deal and you are going to stick with it. Hugh Remington is a senior reporter for 10 Eyewitness News in Australia. He joins me now from Sydney. Welcome to you, Hugh. Hello, Elaine. Well, before we dive into Australia's history, I'd like to ask you how the current battle over immigration in the United States is being viewed by people in Australia. Well, Elaine, I think most people in Australia look at what's happening there in the United States with a, a mixture of horror, but also a sense of deja vu, uh, because it has been possibly the key issue outside straight economics over the whole course of this century has been asylum seeker arrivals, refugee arrivals. Australia doesn't have any land borders. Uh, so the issue for us has been people arriving by sea, usually using Indonesia to the north as a jump off point. And there have been tens of thousands who have made that boat trip over the course of the last 20 years, Elaine. Yeah, let me ask you more about that, about Australia's asylum seekers. Take us through uh, Australia's recent history of refugee boat arrivals and island detention centres specifically. Well, there has been, over the course of this century, governments on both sides have tried to manage this asylum seeker flow. And in the course of the last, say, six or seven years, both sides of politics here uh, have essentially had the same policy, and that is very harsh measures to try to discourage people arriving here by boat. Uh, both parties have a policy now that no one who tries to get here by boat will ever set foot in Australia. So what they have done is they have shipped them off to two Little Island camps initially across the Pacific, one in Papua New Guinea, the other the tiny Republic of Nauru, which has a population only of about 10,000, and they've been sent off to these places, and they still remain there. There are about 1,700 uh, refugees, many of them found by international law to be refugees, still mouldering away on these islands with no hope uh, of ever leaving at the moment. And I think um, as we show our uh, viewers some of these images, if you can, tell us a little bit about the conditions that we know exist in some of these areas uh, in these detention centers and the fact that really there's no legal recourse available as I understand it to those who are being held there. They are stuck there. It is somewhat different for the two islands. So the family groups were sent off to the Republic of Nauru, whereas individual men were sent off to Manus Island, a small island in Papua New Guinea. Now, a couple of years ago, the Papua New Guinea Supreme Court ruled that that detention facility was illegal under Papua New Guinea law. So they have been unwinding those camps and, in fact, have now shut down the camp in Papua New Guinea. But that leaves those people, about 700 men, essentially living in the community in this tiny tiny island. They are not well received in general by the local population. There has been violence expressed uh, against them. It is a very uncomfortable place for them with no prospect of going anywhere else except for the US deal that Barack Obama negotiated with Australia. On Nauru, uh, they get to move around this tiny island, but they are basically stuck there. It is effectively a prison for them. Well, this issue reached a point of contention within the United States when President Trump's comments on the deal uh, that Prime Minister Turnbull struck with then-President Obama to swap refugees um, really got a lot of uh, a play, the, the leaked comments from that conversation. But how did Australians view that? Well, I think at the time it's got to remember this is the first actual phone call between the Australian Prime Minister and the newly arrived President of the United States. And uh, Australians of all political colours generally feel themselves to be very close to the United States. When you consider that President Trump was a Republican president, uh, the government in office here in Australia was essentially a conservative coalition. They are effectively sibling political parties. They should be very close. So the theatre of the scene of that very terse exchange between the new President of the United States and 
and a Conservative Prime Minister of Australia was a source of great fascination here. It was uh, perhaps an early insight into how different President Trump was going to be to his predecessors in the way that he handled friendships, alliances uh, and just generally international relations. So I think that was of more interest to them than the detail of mm. trying to stitch up and, and affirm that refugee deal. Well, let me ask you about the deal because when it was announced, there was a lot of pushback from the refugees themselves, as I understand it, some of whom did not want to come to America and that of those who applied, um, not all of them have been accepted. So what's the latest on this? Well, some didn't want to apply, but plenty others did apply. More applied to get there than have so far been accepted. Uh, but whatever happens, even if the subject to extreme vetting, which President Trump insisted upon, even if the full 1,250 maximum, which was allowed under the Obama deal, uh, were to be taken to the United States, uh, that would still leave others on the islands. So there are still about 1,700 on those islands. There are no other third countries that are looking to accept them other than New Zealand and that's not acceptable to Australia because once they get New Zealand citizenship they can move uh, directly to Australia under the deal between those two countries and that means they would have set foot in Australia and that would breach uh, the rules of both the political parties. So they are stuck there. Hmm. The United States is probably their best prospect in the short term. Well, some of the most recent news to come out of the, de the detention center on Nauru focuses on a refugee uh, who is dying, a refugee from Afghanistan. More than 2,000 doctors have petitioned for the 63-year-old to be transferred to Australia to live out the rest of his life. How is the Australian government dealing with those calls? Well, they're viewing the case of Ali, this Hazara Afghan refugee, much the same as they've viewed every other medical emergency that has taken place on these islands. They are extremely reluctant to let anyone come to Australia. They have done it in a couple of cases for medical treatment. In other cases, people have died on the islands really for want of very basic medical treatment. Now, this man is dying. It is accepted he has a terminal lung cancer. Uh, you know, if he was to come to Australia, it's not as if he's going to be a man who's going to say stick around, try to bring other family members into the country, all those sorts of things. But the government has held such a hard line against anyone getting to Australia that at the moment they continue to refuse, despite these doctors urging on his behalf, they're continuing to refuse to let him get to Australia for this palliative care. All right. Hugh Remington of 10 Eyewitness News in Australia. Hugh, thanks very much. Thank you, Elaine.